Hi, in this video I'll demonstrate how to use Artista option for Photoshop. With this tool you can easily create beautiful artistic shots in a few minutes. Let's see some examples. For example with this photo I made a manual mask like this and then used the action on the image to have a result like this. Also we have a second example. This photo has a mask like this and we had a result like this. And here is a quick variation of the first result. Let's see another one. This owl. We have a result like this. In this case, I use this kind of mask. Or also with the same image, you can have a different result using a different mask. Another example. In this case, the mask is like this. And we have the first result, a first variation, and another variation. Okay, so let's start installing the action package. First, let me close all of these images. Okay, to install the action file, go to menu window, then select actions. When the actions panel opens, click on the icon at the top right corner. Select load actions, find the action file on your hard drive, select it and load it. Now you can see that the action is installed. Now let's install the brushes file. To do it, go to menu window, brush preset, and do the same thing. Click here, load brushes, find the file, and load it. These are the Artista brushes. Now we are ready to work on our images. Let's close this panel and open the first example. First of all, make sure that the image is set as background here. If you have a situation like this, you can set the layer as background by selecting it and going to Layer, New, Background from Layer. Okay? Then make sure that the image is set to RGB color mode and it's 8 bit and also that it has a good resolution. A value between 1000 and a half and 5000 works good. In this case, this image has this resolution. Make sure also that the DPI of your images are not less than 72. Then in the layers panel, click the top right corner icon, select panel option, and make sure that the add copy option is checked, like this. Then click OK. Now let's create the mask layer. To do it, click this icon on the bottom right corner to create a new layer. Double click it and call it mask. All the work is like this. Select the brush tool, a visible color, like this, and brush over your photo. Make sure that the brush is not set to too much soft. You can use a hardness like 80% or 100%, or you can use you could use the Artista standard hard brush, which works very good. Uh, if you want a softer edge, you can lower it to lower the hardness of the brush to 80% and make the mask. Okay. You can use any tool you prefer to make this mask. For example, also the one tools the lasso tools and also the pen tool works very good. The important thing is that at the end you have a mask like this one. Now I will delete the example and keep this as mask. Now we are ready to play back the action. But before going on, make sure that the opacity and flow of the brush tool are set to 100% like this and also that the airbrush mode is uh, turned off. Then open the action panel again, select the artista action and click play. It will take around 6 minutes for the playback, so I will fast forward this phase. When the playback is finished, this message will appear, click stop, close the action panel, 
and this is the result of the action playback on our image. You can see the structure of layers that it has generated. It has created many graphical elements uh, that you can combine and tweak to make lots of variations of this first result. First thing to do now is to organize better this structure of layers. To do it, go to the main group, which is Artist Output. Hold Alt on your keyboard and close the group. Then release Alt from your keyboard and open the group again. You can see now that all the groups and layers are better organized. We will analyze these layers one by one and see how to work with them. Take note that the first result is never perfect because it requires a, some tweaking and customization of these layers. As you can see we have three main categories of layers. The yellow one which is the background, the blue one which is the foreground, which is the area that we masked before, and the purple one which is post effing and color correction. Now let's hide all of these groups and leave only the basic background color and the post effect group. Now we will take a look at the foreground blue layers, starting from the bottom one which is the foreground field. This group adds this painted effect to the image and it's made by other sub layers which are these. And we have a smudge layer at the beginning that adds this kind of noise. And you can modify the blending mode and the field and opacity of all of these layers and to make combinations and variations. Then we have a simple gray field of the foreground. Uh, you can turn off this layer if you want the foreground to blend better with the background or turn it on if you want the foreground to pop out more in the image. Then we have our three main fill layers which are Paint Fill 1, Fill 2 and Cutout Fill. Um, also here you can change opacity and blending mode of these layers and combine them to make variations. Uh, the first two are um, a painted effect and the last one is a more abstract effect. Let's take a look at it. Also notice that the cutout field is a smart object so you can modify the cutout filter by double clicking filter gallery here and you can modify this filter to change this effect. Okay, then last layer of this group is Match 1 layer, which adds this kind of effect. Also, here, change opacity and blending mode to suit your needs. Then we can go on with the foreground shadows group, unhide it, and open it. You can see how it's made. We have shadow 1, a color for shadow 1, and shadow 2. Okay, this is shadow one. Also here you can change opacity and blending mode. For example, also multiply your color burn works good. And if you unhide the second layer, which is shadow color, you can double click here and change the color of this layer. Okay. And then we have shadow two, which adds a bit of contrast to these shadows. Okay. Let's go on with the foreground highlights group and hide it and open it. First layer of this group, the bottom one is highlight one that as you can see it doesn't give a real contribution to the image. This is because the action is designed to work uh, with a lot of kind of, uh, of images. So in this case highlight one doesn't do very much but with a different type of image it can be useful. Uh, notice that this layer, highlight one, is provided of an adjustment layer for a hue and saturation. Then we have other three highlight layers, the number two, three, and four. Just unhide them one by one and see what, what is their contribution to the image and modify the opacity and blending mode to suit your needs and find your own combination. At last we have an outer glow layer and an inner glow layer. Also here you can modify opacity and blending mode of this layer. Uh, notice that here you can modify the layer style effect 
for example double click the inner glow you can modify the size of the inner glow or also the blending mode here okay now let's go on the foreground lines group and hide it as you can see this layer adds this sketched effect to the image uh, and also read here it says paint mask with black brush to hide parts it's useful if you want to reveal parts of the image and hide this effect in that area so let's do it select the mask channel of this layer of this group a black color select the brush tool and in this case I'm going to pick the Artista standard soft brush and paint over her face to reveal some of the image now you can see that we have given some focus to this area now let's take a look to the layers of the foreground lines group the first one is light black stroke which adds this tiny stroke to the foreground okay also here you can modify the blending mode or even modify the layer style to make maybe the stroke bigger okay then we have uh, the light outline layer which isn't giving also this layer a real contribution to the image but it will work with other kind of images you can hide it for now then we have these three layers called bright lines one two and three these layers add this kind of sketch effect to the image okay bright lines 3 is hided by default so let's unhide it and see what it does also with these three layers you can modify the blending mode and the opacity to suit your needs and find the right combination for your image and also remember that if there are parts of these layers that you don't like you can easily make a mask for example i don't like this part of bright lines 3 layers so i select make a new mask okay select the mask and with a black brush i paint over the area that i want to hide then we have uh, dark lines layers one two and three which works exactly like the bright lines but they made the dark strokes of the image okay so now let's go on with another group for now i will jump the uh, foreground drips group and go on with the paint effect group. Let's unhide it. This group adds this splash effect, paint splash effect to the foreground. Like this. Let's see how it's done. We have these four layers inside. The first one is small splashes. Okay. The second one is small splashes too then we have the dry brush layer and the paint spot layer also here you can modify the blending mode and the opacity of these four layers to suit your needs if you want to delete some parts of this effect you can do it by going to the mask of the main group which is this one taking a black brush and for example i want to remove this spot here i just brush over it and it's removed you can also add more paint splashes uh, to do it select one of the artista brushes uh, just try all of them to see what they do i select the artista brush number one select the mask channel of one of these layers change the size of the brush so let's say 2000 pixels and then with a white brush i can brush over the mask and add and add some splashes okay now let's close the paint effect group and take a look at foreground detail en enhancer layer okay this layer adds some sharpening to the wall foreground okay and it's set to 65 percent you can make it more or less visible now let's unhide the foreground original reveal layer this is a duplicate of the original photo and you can use it to reveal important parts of the image to do it select 
uh, something like a soft brush, the Artista soft, standard soft brush works good. Select the mask channel of the layer and with a br white brush, brush over it. You can see that the details of the original photo now are revealed. Okay, this layer is set to 60% and you can modify the blending, the opacity to make it more or less visible. In this case, a value of 40% was good. Now we are ready to work with the foreground drips group. Unhide it and open the group. You can see that there are four other groups inside, up, down, left and right, and by default only the drips up group is unhided. Let's take a look at the others. Down, left and right. For this image we will work with the drips up group with, because it makes uh, the image very dynamic. So let's take a look at this group, open it. You can see that there are five other layers inside. Uh, let's unhide them all and take a look at them one by one. First one is drips up one, which adds this kind of effect. Each drip layer is provided of a mask channel and you can use it to hide some parts of the layer. For example, in this case, I don't like this drip here. So I pick a black brush, select the mask channel and brush over this part to hide it. Okay? You can do it this procedure uh, on each single layer or you can do it in their respective group or also in the main group. Unhide now the layer drips up number 2 and this layer is very similar to the, to the number 1 but in this case the drips are positioned in a different manner. Also here you can delete parts that you don't like. Okay. And remember that also here you can modify the opacity and blending mode of these layers. For example if I set it to screen, it becomes like this, ok? And again you can change these two parameters for each single layer or you can do it also in their group or in the main foreground drips group. Now let's take a look at the third layer, which is this one. To make it more visible I will hide the previous two. And this is the layer number 3. Also here you can delete parts of the layer by selecting the mask channel and with a white brush, sorry with a black brush, brushing over it. Unhide the next layer of the group which is drips up for blur. This layer adds this dynamic effect to the wall image and uh, the fourth layer and the fifth are very similar but the effect is positioned in different manner. Okay, also here with these two layers we can modify as always the blending mode and the opacity. And like for the other layers we can paint over the mask of the layer to hide some parts of it. Just take a look. For example in the fifth layer we have a drip coming over the face and we can hide it. Just brushing over the mask. Okay. Notice that the layer number one, two, 4 and 5 are smart objects. Let's see the layer number 1 and open it. Okay, it has a wave filter that is hided. You can unhide the wave filter to make the drips has this effect. And also you can double click the filter and modify its parameters. You can do the same for the drips up layer. Okay and also for the blur layers. Here you can modify both the wave filter and the motion blur filter. Ok, let's unhide these four layers. For this example I will not use the drip up to layer because it makes the image a bit messy. If you want, you can also duplicate one of these layers. For example, I duplicate the drip up for blur and just scale it and move it to 
make this type of effect more visible. Now let's take a look at the yellow layers, which are the layers of the background, starting from the background outline group. If you unhide this group, you will notice that there is no contribution for the image from this group. This is because our original image didn't have a lot of details uh, in the background, so this, um, this group in this case is not very useful. But we will see in the next example how to use it. So let's go on with the background fill options. And as you can see, there is written here in the group try one fill option at a time, but you can also mix them. Unhide this group, and you will see now that our background has appeared. And if you open this group, you can see that there are di uh, different options, eight options for the background. We will see more in detail the first two options in the next example. So for now, let's start taking a look at the third one. So I will hide the fill option uh, number six, which is the default option, and unhide this one, which has a cutout abstract effect. Okay. Also here you can modify the opacity of the layer or even the blending mode to make it blend with the background color. Let's leave 65% for now. Then we have another cutout example, which is a little bit more abstract. Then we have this option, this option, and the blur options. This one, this one. As you can see, each of these options has a mask which is hided for now. You can unhide the mask by holding shift on your keyboard and clicking the mask channel. And this is a mask of shadows extracted from the original image. And if you want, you can also invert this mask by clicking on the mask channel and pressing Ctrl I on the keyboard. You can also try mixing uh, these background options by, for example, unhiding two of them and modifying the opacity of the first one. Okay, for now, let's leave uh, the seventh option unhiding and we are done with the background fill option group. Then we have the background color layer, uh, which is a simple adjustment layer. You can double click it and change the color from there. Okay. And finally, we can take a look at the post effects group. Uh, I will unhide again the fill option. Open the post effects group. Starting from the bottom, there is the texture effects group. This group adds a texture to the image, and you have uh, five options inside of it. As you can see, there is written try one texture at a time, but you can also blend two of them if needed. Let's take a look. And then one by one, you can modify the opacity of each of each one of these layers to make them less or more visible. Text of four, three, two, okay, then we have our vignette layer. Here also you can modify the opacity to make it more or less visible. A grain layer, same thing here. Then we have the global contrast adjustment layer. You can modify its opacity if you want to have more contrast or less contrast. Okay, let's leave something like 80% for now. Then we have the global hue saturation adjustment layer. You can double click it to change its parameters. Let's leave something like 55. Okay, we are finished with this example. Now we can go on with the second example. This is the second example, and as you can see, this image has more detail in the background. And from this image with this mask, the action gave this result. As you can see, the drip group is a bit messy here, but it can be easily fixed. For now, let's just hide it. 
and take a look at the rest. We can also hide the background for a moment. Okay. And this is the result of the foreground without the foreground drips loop. Now I will quickly fix this area of the paint effect. As you can see, it's a bit messy there. To do it, I select the main group of paint effect and with a black brush, I paint over the area that I want to hide. Okay. Now let's take a look at the background layers. In this case, there are some information in the background of lines. Inside this group, there are these three layers. And also here, you can modify the opacity of each layer to suit your needs. Now let's take a look again to the background fill options and see the first two options that we haven't seen before. Let's hide the default option. See the number one. This layer adds uh, um, some kind of glow to the edges of the image. And this one adds a colored glow to the edges of the image. Let's make a quick customization to the drips. Unhide the group and for this example I'm going to use drips right group. Let's let's hide all of these layers and start from the first one. Okay, here I will delete some parts that I don't want to use. Okay, also in the face. Let's see drips right layer. Okay, also here I'm going to delete these ugly parts and refine the wall layer. Let's see drip right number three. As you can see, this layer is really messy, but I'm going to delete everything in the left. Okay, and also this part to have this kind of effect. Okay, let's take a look at this one, the blur layers, okay, maybe I can set this on screen, and at last let's unhide the last one. Okay, now I will restore part of the original image to make the face of the guy more visible and I do it with a white brush. Okay, maybe also something in the hand and the skip. Okay, let's set this to 45%. Okay. Now let's take a look at uh, the backgrounds of this image. We have already seen the first two. This is the third one. Okay. And you can also change the background color to change the tone of the image. And if you want the foreground to blend with the background, you can turn off this base gray field layer. We have finished also the second example, so thank you for your attention and support.